In this video, we're going to use the integral test to define the convergence of a series. So consider the series here, n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 1. Is this thing convergent or not? So now to use the integral test, we have to compare the sequence in play with, which is a discrete function there, with the continuous expansion of it. So notice here that um, we want to consider the function f of x equals 1 over x squared plus 1, like so. And then the sequence in play, a sub n, this is equal to 1 over n squared plus 1. And just as a distinction here, when we talk about the sequence, we'll often use subscripts to represent the variable. And then the number in play here is going to be an n for the natural number n, as opposed to the continuous function f of x, for which we'll use an x to denote the variable here. Now, these two things are related to each other. Um, and we want, to use, we want to use the integral test because this f of x is the expansion of the sequence a sub n, which is the same sequence that we picked up right here. Now, in order to use the integral test, we need three things. First, we need to check, is the sequence or is the function positive? Is f a positive function? That is, if we choose any number, will f of x be greater than 0? Now, let's start off with the number x, right? Well, if we square it, square any real number, that's going to be greater than or equal to 0. If you add 1 to it, like here, x squared plus 1, you, that's always going to be greater than 0, right? And then when you take the reciprocal of a positive number, that still is going to be positive. So 1 over x squared plus 1 will be greater than 0. And this is true for any choice of x here. So the answer is yes, f of x is always positive, absolutely. It's going to be positive for all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. Now, for the case of the integral test, we only need this to be true for 1 to infinity. So in particular, since it's positive everywhere, it's going to be positive on the interval 1 to infinity. That's the first one. Great. Um, let's check for continuous. This is often an easy one to check, but is it continuous? We need it. Well, take, the, take, take our function here, um, 1 over x squared plus 1. We're going to see that this thing is continuous because if you take the number x and you square it, square it is a continuous function. We add 1 to it, adding as a continuous function. And if you divide by 1, uh, or that is you take 1 divided by x squared plus 1, division is a continuous operation. The only issue we have to worry about is does the denominator ever go to 0? Now, as we observed before, x squared plus 1 is always greater than 0. So the denominator here can never equal 0. So there's no discontinuities, no vertical asymptotes, no removal discontinuities. Um, we're continuous, right? So because the x squared plus 1 is positive, uh, that we don't have to worry about discontinuities. That's the only thing we have to worry about there. So then that brings us to the last, the last topic here about is it decreasing? That's the last assumption one needs for the integral test. Now, to see that it's decreasing, what I want you to do is compare the following. Um, on the interval 1 to infinity, take the expression x squared. And, well, maybe not x squared. We should, we should be talking about the sequence right here. Uh, take n squared instead. Sorry about that. So if n squared, it's, it's less than or equal to n plus 1 squared. I'm just saying here that the, the squaring function is an increasing function. Now, when you take the reciprocals of this, 1 over n squared will actually be greater than 1 over n plus 1 squared. Um, if, if numbers are getting bigger, their reciprocals are going to get smaller. And so this tells us that our function is decreasing. Our, our function is decreasing. Now, if we want to, so this, this is actually showing that the sequence is decreasing, which is all that we really need here. Uh, but the function, we also get that it's decreasing. You could use the derivative to help you out here if there's any, any concern whatsoever. But since our function is positive, continuous, and decreasing, what we can do is we can see that the, our series will be convergent if and only if the integral is converted. So we want to look at the improper integral, 1 to infinity of the function 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. And now with this integral, we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, for 1 over x squared plus 1, we might think of doing a trig substitution, which would actually be right. We could take x to be tangent theta. But this actually is a very common form. Um, 1 over x squared plus 1 is the derivative of arctangent. So if we did that trig substitution, in the end, we'd end up with um, arctangent of x there. So I'm kind of skipping the steps there as we go from 1 to infinity. And so plugging these things in here, we take arctangent of infinity minus 
uh, arctangent of one, we see right here. Now, when I say arctangent of infinity, I don't actually mean we plugged infinity into arctangent because infinity is not a number, so we can't actually evaluate it there. This, of course, is just an abbreviation for the limit. The limit as x approaches infinity, what happens to arctangent of x? Now, because arctangent has a horizontal asymptote, uh, this asymptote actually is pi halves. And arctangent of one, that's just pi force. This thing will combine just to give us pi force. This tells us that the integral, uh, this improper integral actually adds up to be pi force. It's less than infinity. This is evidence that the integral is convergent. And we're talking about the, the improper integral is convergent. Therefore, the, the integral test comes into play right here that the convergence of the integral actually implies, uh, where was it? There you are. The series likewise is going to be convergent. And why is that? Because when we talk about the convergence and divergence of series, it's not just good enough to say convergent, divergent. You need to provide the evidence on why it's convergent. And the evidence comes from the integral test. Because the improper integral was convergent, the associated, the associated series must likewise be convergent. Because if the integral was divergent, then the series would be divergent. If the integral is convergent, then the series has to be convergent as well.